The scientific process. This is a little slideshow. Help you walk through the steps of it. What's the scientific process? Well, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven step process. You ask a question. Why would you ask a question? Well, somebody either made you do it or you were just looking at something and saying, I have a problem, I need to solve it. What's the best way? How can I improve upon? Is it possible to? You do a little research, look into it, and then you say, all right, I think the best way to do it is X, Y, Z. Uh, you have a problem coming up where I say, what's the best way to get around the school? And you say, I think I go through the lounge. My problem is I have to get around the school. I talk to people. They say, no, the lounge is faster. No, the science wing. No, go outside. You say, I think it's the lounge. So you test it with an experiment. You would clock your how long it takes you to get around the school, both directions on different days. Then you analyze the results and you draw a conclusion. And you will either say, yes, the lounge is the one, or you know what? I don't think the lounge is the one. Let me go back and try it again. Maybe the science wing is the best way, so on and so on. And then you report your results. So that's a seven-step process. These are vocabulary you will need to know. We're going to go through them in the next few slides. Hypothesis, variables, and experiment. Big word here is the educated guess. That's what a hypothesis is. It's not just a wild guess, not just a wild theory. It's not something that you've been studying for a long time. It's something that you look at, you do some background checking, you say, here's my best guess. This is a smart guess. The data should show me that this is going to work. And you have to understand that there are two major variables, the independent and dependent variables. This is so important that you'll be tested on it quite literally all year. Every quiz, every test, every exam will have an independent, dependent variable question at the beginning. It's important you understand cause and effect. What is the independent variable that you're messing with? And what is the dependent variable that you're measuring? If you remember those words, you should be good. Now, scientific theory. It's not in the book that we'd go over it. It's a little bit bigger and it's kind of out of place here, but you need to be aware of it. It's not an educated guess. It's something that was an educated guess at one time, and then they built up a lot of data that seems to support it. So they've moved it up a rank and called it a scientific theory. It's not just a guess, but at the same time, it's still a theory, the theory of evolution. A lot of data out there that points to this seems to be the way that human beings and all of nature have evolved over time, but it's still not a fact because they can't prove it. So they call it a scientific theory. So it's a good theory and it works, but it's not necessarily considered a fact. And it's certainly not just a guess. Variable is a factor that affects the behavior of the system. There's several different variables and these are the big ones. This is the one I want you to get more than anything else, the independent. There's a definition there, but this is the one we mess with. We change it. We say, all right, I'm going to put more weight on a plane. Oh, okay, I'm going to try different routes. All right, I'm going to see which fertilizer works best for growing grass. And dependent is the one we measure. So I measured how far the plane went. I measured which way was fastest. I measured how much the grass grew. All dependent variables. Control variable pops up. You've heard it before, most of you, in your science classes. You don't need to worry about it so much. But in each one of those, if I measured which plane went fastest based on how much weight I put into it, the control variable would be the type of plane. It stays the same, even though I could alter it. In the grass, I make sure I'm using the same type of grass, not Kentucky bluegrass for one and then crabgrass for another. In the way I go around the school, I make sure it's the same person with the same walking pace on the same scheduled day. Schedule B, Schedule A, Schedule C might be different. So I have to control all those variables and make sure they're the same so that what I'm measuring is just one change, the independent variable. I change that. The dependent variable, I measure that. And an experiment, this is what you do. See which variable's going to get messed with and which one's going to get measured and whether or not you're right about your hypothesis. These are three cases. I'm not going to talk over them. You can read them and answer on the attached sheet. Pause the tape if you need to read them.
And just some things for you to ponder. A couple days we've had so far. What elements of the scientific method were present? In particular, the paper airplane experiment. Which one thing would you say was scientific about what you did? Which was not? Think about it. Hash it up. Do not give me some nonsense answer. Well, we were being scientific because we're in science class. I'm looking for some deeper thoughts. You have to actually dig. Use bullet points and write down your thoughts. But do not just say science because of science. Looking for an actual thought coming out of your head. Not just reacting to the world around you. You have to actually think about it. That's it. Good luck.